You're listening to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Visit our website for free resources to aid you in your pursuit of self-liberation. Old Vanu publications, podcasts, guest articles, and much more. Go to vanupodcast.com. And now, your hosts, Shane and Jason. This is Anarchy Radio. I'm your host, the Liber DJ Phoenix. My wonderful, beautiful co-host over here, we got Jackie Kay. And joining us today from the Vanu Podcast, we have Jason Booth and Shane Radliff. What's going on, people? Hey, morning, folks. Appreciate uh, the invitation to come on and chat. Yeah, I'm excited. I love doing podcasts. I love your guys' stuff, and I love talking Liberty. So it's a win-win. Hell yeah. Jackie K, you looking fabulous over there. Look like look like you did your hair and got it all got it all did up. <laughs> uh, like a shower does wonders. <laughs> hey, at least once a month, right? So, <laughs> so uh, we've been covering. We've been doing this new segment on the on Friday nights um, called the Panarchy Discussions, where we bring together anarchy and comms and caps any anybody that have really differing ide- ideologies. And we figure out how to make inroads to connect them instead of infighting and, and move forward. And one of the big things that I wanted to, um, to address within those discussions is how do you actually make, take tangible steps to get from where we are now to a free voluntary community if we can't have a, a, a free and voluntary world? Cause personally, I think that's going to take generations to, to actually a- attain. And one of the things on the Vanu podcast that you guys have touched on, is the idea of operating in the second realm and the uh, and the different methods that individuals can take to free themselves from government. So, one of the main things that you guys do on your show, uh, the Vanu Podcast, which you can find at vanupodcast.com, dot uh, com, is you know you go over definitions. So, can you define for mm-hmm. me uh, what the Vanu what uh, what what the second realm is? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, and uh, um, yeah, we we always try to uh, to start off with uh, with definitions, but um, so there's a there's a couple possible ones um, that uh, that uh, we can use. One of them is actually from a a, a, a crypto agorist uh, fictional novella uh, called Hashtag Agora, um, and in that book, um, it's defined as quote technically the second realm is described as encrypted communication, encrypted currencies, anonymous and pseudonymous identities, and untraceable action. Uh, in quotes. Uh, another possible definition is an updated version of temporary autonomous zones, uh, essentially the ability to conduct trade and other activities, including vices, in certain areas at particular times without reprisal from the state. Uh, Taz is originally conceived of as geographically mobile, like Vanu shelters, yet now it may include cyberspace such as the deep web. And I want to kind of toss in a third one here that I just found before, um, before, before the show before we started and uh it was just so relevant to today um with uh with you know the push towards uh with you know the yeah, this current uh, you know the great panic of 2020 you know pushing everyone towards uh doing everything digitally and uh you know away from physical space and time um well this is actually from second round book on strategy yeah there's an entire book on this um but uh but yeah this is uh from uh the first chapter and it's just a conclusionary point quote we must form a culture and society of liberty or at least take f- uh, first steps towards this goal and nourish attempts to c- accomplish a cultural, a cultural secession from the mainstream society that allows us to form and protect institutions of social interaction and relationships. So that's the idea, um, is basically pockets of freedom and, f- and physical space and time, as well as uh, digitally. Um, so yeah, that's that's the idea. Is we're we're not gonna tr- we're not gonna ra- wait around for um, all of society to to understand freedom, or we'd be a long ways away, right? I mean, look, look at what's look at what's going on. Obviously, people don't understand freedom. People don't desire freedom. They don't desire personal responsibility or self sufficiency. Uh, so, if we want freedom, we're going to have to to, to build it ourselves. We're gonna have to build these these pockets of freedom, uh, and uh, that is the entire idea behind uh, behind uh, the, the behind, behind building second realms. All right, I, I I fucking love that. So so what we're doing right now? This could, would this be considered a second realm? So um, I I would I would consider it. Yeah, I mean yeah, um, I would. Uh, I mean it is Zoom, 
Um, but um, I, w- I would consider, you know, we'll, 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 I guess we'll abstract another layer. We're on float. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we're, we're streaming to float. So, of course, this is a, a digital second realm. There's no, there's no censorship. Autonomy is respected. Uh, and, and, and yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're like minded, like minded, uh, you know, self liberators in pursuit of freedom. So, yeah, of course, uh, float. Yeah, this would be a, definitely a, a digital second realm here with everyone. All right. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm going backwards a little bit, but, um, can you guys give us you know, a little bit of ex- ex- um, a description of how you guys came to realize that you know government was immoral and you know what was your path? What, what was your guys' path to liberty? You know, all the all the all the shows are doing that. You know, everybody always starts off. You know, how'd you become an anarchist? Thanks, thanks, Jeff. You 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 set the trend um, with his little anarchist. You know, every single time he did the show, he was you know, how'd you become an anarchist? And it's it's poignant it, it, and it works. So, uh, Jason, how about yourself? How'd you how'd you become an anarchist? Oh, that's a long road. Like, you know, yeah, they say like the difference between a libertarian anarchist is, is six months. It was like 18 months, maybe two <laughs> years, something along those there. But um, uh, I started um, like Ron Paul, like the, the Ron Paul revolution, Revo- uh, love evolution, whatever you want to call it. That kind of made me libertarian, arguing with those people. And then through running a page on Facebook, arguing with anarchists, <laughs> anarchists like started planting seeds and the seeds took over and i just it, it took me a long time because i couldn't let let go of that damn piece of paper that the, the constitution and bill of rights but eventually yeah I, just, I came over and i was like an ancap for like a month a month and a half and i read carl hess anarchism without hyphens boom right big brain explosion big light bulb over the head and i'm just like that right there that's it See, I haven't touched that one yet. So, like, I, I've oh, I've heard the on. name. I've heard that. You know, whenever I try and read, I fall asleep. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> like, I get it. You know, intellectually, I get it, mm-hmm. but I don't have facts to back it up. You know, that's, yeah. So maybe I'll have to touch on some Carl Hess. Um, yeah, he talks about. He says, uh, all uh, all anarchists are voluntarists. Like, you you can't you can't be an anarchist if you're trying to force your ways on other people, right? Hmm. Right, so the only way to be a real anarchist is to be a voluntarist. Okay, and that just kind of made sense. And then from there, it was like I hooked up with like the Seeds of Liberty guys, Jeremy Hengeller, and and those guys. And then like I got into Ben Stone, and I'm actually uh, I helped promote Ben's book, Sedition, Subversion, Sabotage, and that led that led me to Shane, and then uh, Liberty Under Attack and Vanu, and just I'm all over it now. <laughs> all right, well, Shane, how about you? What was your path to Liberty? Uh, yeah, well, it was, uh, yeah, a, a long one, I guess you could say. Yeah, it started, uh, I, I, I guess the, the, the first, the first point in the timeline is, yeah, I think I was like, it was 17 or 18, and there was a documentary on Netflix called 9 11 Lose Change. Uh, and I watched that documentary, and I was, yeah, eight, yeah 18 years old. I was in a, a really, I, I would say, probably not a great part, a great point in my life. And I just kind of randomly stumbled upon it, watched it. Well, first, first time I ever came across information like that. And, uh, yeah, basically that kind of, uh, kind of got me, got me started in the path, uh, um, in February of 2015, I launched uh, Liberty Under Attack Radio, and uh, it was supposed to be it was, it was supposed to it was intended to be a, a conspiratorial replacement for for Bill Cooper's uh, The Hour of the Time. Uh, he he died in 2001. He was killed by killed by uh, bludgies. But uh, um, so yeah, I, I started the show as a conspiratorial kind of uh, kind of show, and a few months later, I found anarchism. Uh, so I went down my uh, you know Austrian economics philosophy. Uh, my rabbit hole read a lot of books in, in in you know six six months or a year you know span of time. Uh, but pretty soon after, I, I said, "All right, like free market's the way to go. Uh, you know, coercion sucks. Like, all right, let's 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 find freedom. What what are we doing, guys? What are we doing?" And uh, you know, there's people. So there are a few folks talking about agorism, which is great. Um, you know, there were some scattered folks doing some some cool things, but there really wasn't a whole lot of talk on solutions. So, uh, yeah, very very soon after starting the radio show, towards the end of 2015, that was what I uh, basically made my made my 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 liberty mission was uh, to bring solutions to uh, to to the table and have that be my focus. Uh, so. That was uh, yeah, starting in 2015, 2016. We did the direct action series, which was six months long, six months of episodes of, uh, you know, uh, examining uh, you know various freedom strategies. Uh, in 20 in January of 2017, I launched the Vanu podcast with uh, Kai Reardon, uh, which uh, just real briefly, Vanu is an awkward contraction of the words voluntary, not vulnerable, and is uh, per premise around becoming as invulnerable to coercion as humanly possible. Uh, and that's both from public coercers, governments, and private coercers, uh, private violators of personal property, like the local methods here. Um, that's really the only coercion I have to worry about here is local methods. So private coercion, that's, uh, that's, that's another, another, another part of Vanu to use a real practical real world example. So since you're on a farm, uh, all you got to uh, do is start, you know, start make, start cooking up some meth, you know, in, increase trade, 
You know, I mean, if, as long as, you know, goods and services are passing, then, you know, armies don't. So if you, you know, if you give them what they need, they'll probably leave you alone. Unless they get really hyped out and then they want to eat a goat or something. Right, right. <laughs> Right. So, so yeah, that's that's the that's the idea is that you know, becoming invulnerable to, invulnerable to, to to all coercion of all forms uh, from from all uh, from all coercers, and this is done by way of lifestyle changes. So off, so uh, homesteading, van nomadism, living you know living on a sailboat, perpetual traveling. Um, there's a, a, a lot of a lot of strategies, and it's very very individualizable because we're all uh, in different positions with uh, different with different uh, scenarios. Some people have kids, some people have children. I don't. Um, so everyone's in a different situation. Bonnie is very individualizable and that's, uh, you know, you can choose a lifestyle. Uh, you can, yeah, it's, it's, it's yours for the making is, is, uh, the kind of the tagline I've said for, for, for quite some time. Um, so yeah, started, started the Bonnie podcast January of 2017. That's continued until now. And, uh, I mean, that's, 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 that's been my focus is, uh, is, is, is solutions. Uh, and I mean, that's the, the topic we're talking about today as well, you know, build, building second realms. I mean, I, I, uh, it, it was necessary in, in 2015 when I when I kind of started this this adventure, but um, ever it's ever more so important right now um, on, with Shane, uh, plug, all plug the, the all the insanity. Plug, plug, plug oh, yeah, the book. I guess um, I'm an I'm an author too. Yeah, Bonnie, uh, Yeah, I wrote a book, uh, Bonnie, a strategy for self liberation. Uh, wrote that <laughs> uh, mid mid 2018. I never promote my book, guys. I'm, I'm terrible. I'm terrible at it. Um, but uh, yeah, I wrote it. Uh, uh, so yeah, if you want more on Vanu, uh, you can you can find it for free um, as well. Um, so. Yeah, like I go through all the, the philosophy that the, the the strategy itself, all sorts of all sorts of various lifestyle changes, pursuance of freedom. Um, so yeah, that's uh, I guess a little about me. That's 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 all I do is, is focus on solutions. And and now most of my time is spent outside with with my twenty some farm animals, goats and chickens <laughs> and ducks and um, all sorts of stuff. Now, I'm addicted to buying livestock now. So you know, like they're, they're talking about another stimulus check. I love it. You know, I used to, I used to not like this sort of stuff. Because you know socialism is bad, but it's all funny money now, right? Like who right. gives a shit? Like if they're going to be if they're going to be issuing stimulus checks, I'm going to buy some Bitcoin. I'm going to buy as many farm animals as I can, like hard assets. So as far as I'm concerned, like keep the stimulus checks coming. I got shit to buy. Like I got stuff that's actually worth worth stuff to buy. Um, in the short term, well, people are still accepting that as a medium of change. So. You know, I was I was really dead set on not doing it just like you know i'm gonna just take a principled stance i'm not gonna get their goddamn money i don't what do, what do i what why am i gonna take their their freaking uh, their payoff for it's I'm the, not, I'm, I'm not it's deposited in my account like what am i gonna do not spend it like <laughs> <laughs> right so like and i was like wait a minute why am i gonna leave money on the table like i can do something positive with this stuff so right you know i, I eventually you know I, I filed for it and i was like yay i got 1200 bucks you know and i'm probably just gonna give it right back to the state fuck them <laughs> I, I I work under the table. I didn't get one. <laughs> I didn't get one either. I'm a tax evader. Give me the big bird. <laughs> see, see, you should have filed. Damn, man. So, Jackie K, I don't think we ever covered your path to liberty. Like, what was your what was your path? Uh, my whole life has been anarchy. I uh, had a broken home and. Um, the state didn't want me, thank God, and uh, grew up on the streets and sold drugs and a high school dropout, and my whole life has been non-compliant. All right, hell yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going we're gonna to kick off to a quick music break here. We've got coming up a little bit of King Conqueror, Nervous Odor Seclorum, and Molotov Solution and Justice for All. Gentlemen, why did you guys pick those songs? Because these are, of course, you know, the guest... These are, these are the guest songs that we always do on this episode for Saturday mornings. So what what made you guys think pick those ones? Uh, Jason, how about you with uh, Nervous Order Seclorum? I don't know any of those songs. Oh, yeah, these, <laughs> those are mine. Oh, were yeah. both of those yours? Oh, try doing the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Shane, what what made you pick those two songs? <laughs> Yeah, so I, as as I said, like I mean, this is this has been my my focus is freedom and liberty. It's like all I focus, it's all I focus on. I mean, that's my 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 when I'm when I'm not uh, you know making liquor, um, you know, at my not real day job, I'm here you know doing the off grid homesteading thing. Um, so you know, music. Uh, um, I'm a metalhead, uh, and there's a I guess a subgenre of metal called politicore. So it's just metal, it's metal about politics and, and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, King Conquer Molotov Solution. Are um, I guess uh, bands I listen to a lot. Um, they aren't around anymore. Um, but yeah, I love metal and especially, you know, when there's, uh, you know, some hard truth in there. 
um, I think that's uh, that's that's a great thing. So yeah, yeah. Metal is one of the few genres I can't get down with. Like back in high school, I had a bunch of bunch of my friends. They they created you know thrash bands, and I just couldn't dig it because I couldn't understand what the hell they were saying. So I was like, fuck this. I mean, I love the beats in them, but I, I just couldn't get the. I could if I couldn't hear what the hell they were actually trying to say. I just couldn't dig it. So, but anyways, you know that's about <laughs> that's all freedoms for you know. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back after this quick break. Uh, with some King Conqueror with Norvis Odorsochlorum and Molotov Solution in Justice for All. Stay tuned. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy, the Liber DJ Phoenix. Joining me, of course, I got Jackie K out in Colorado. We got Mr. Shane Radliff down in Southern Illinois. And Jason, where are you at? Just so I that am, the FBI knows. I'm in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, God. I'm yeah, so sorry. I'm like 30 miles east of San Francisco. Jesus Christ! Does 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 the shit still land on the sidewalks over there? Oh no no! I'm right by the river. Okay. They 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 go in the water. <laughs> Jesus! It just it just washes off in the water. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. a better situation. So the, fish, the fishing's good right there though. For some reason, I don't know why. Then they don't have like three eyes. No. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> no, I'm I'm a little I'm a little east of all the plants. So. <laughs> so are you guys going to uh, Anarchy Ve- or Anarcho Vegas? Crypto Vegas? You guys gonna make it out there? No. Ah, oh, terrible. I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I I know I'm gonna make it to to MPL Fest this year. Um, but yeah, I don't know my my not real day job at the distillery of uh, opening up to the public at the end of the year. Uh, so I'll be uh be busy the next next uh, couple months. I just I always make sure to slate some time for the MPL Fest. But yeah, I don't I won't have much more time to to travel this year, unfortunately. Well, as long as as long as they don't fucking try and take my blood, I'll be there. But I've heard, you know, the the fucking airlines are trying to take people's blood these days, so I don't know if I'll be willing to do all that shit. Like, that's that's just craziest. So, getting into tangible steps of the second realm. Um, you mentioned homesteading, van nomadism, um, sailboats. Um, can, why don't you uh, touch on one of those one of those topics? Uh, which one is your 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 favorite method right now? Um, yeah, so for, for me, um, I mean, uh, I, I'm, I guess, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm doing the, the homesteading thing. And, uh, since I'm going to be, since if I'm going to be here for an extended period of time, I'm definitely, um, uh, definitely going to go off grid. Uh, so that's going to be the, the, the focus over the next couple of years. But I, I also think it's, uh, it's good to prepare for the worst. And that's, um, I don't know how, how much longer, you know, the USSA is going to be tenable, you know, as a, as a living situation. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm making plans and, and I, I plan on being here, uh, uh, I plan on being here for, uh, you know, for, for some time, but I'm also, I guess, making plans to, to get a van and convert it so that if I ever need to, uh, yeah, hit the road, uh, and head to Mexico, um, I've got that, uh, that ability. So, um, those are, those are really kind of the, 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 the two, the two solutions I'm, I'm, I'm working, working towards. Um, and, uh, in terms of, in, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the second realm, um, yeah, obviously you can have, you'd have permanent autonomous zones, you know, phys- you know, I guess physical locations I can't move, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I can move though. I can leave. Um, and I can, and, and this property is not my name. I, I use a proxy merchant, so, which is a, another second round concept. Uh, um, I guess another, uh, another individual or group of individuals handle my interactions with the state. Uh, so I don't do any of that. Um, this isn't, this isn't where I live according, you know, anywhere on paper. So, um, that's, that's the, 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 the kind of idea, um, to, to give you an idea of, of, of how, um, you know, such lifestyles could maybe look, but yeah, yeah, there's, there's, like, like I said before, there's a lot of other ones. Um, and, uh, really, uh, in terms of Vanu, um, which is to kind of, I guess, to expand, um, expand a little more beyond the second realm. Um, yeah, really anything you can do to make yourself more invulnerable to coercion, uh, is, is definitely, uh, definitely worthwhile. So there's a concept called legal intercises. Uh, Jason, can you touch upon what those are? Loopholes. Really, that that's that's essentially what it is. It's 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 a loophole, uh, or kind of a, a a grayish zone where something's legal, but it's not quite like completely off the grid type of thing. So yeah, it, what it is, it's just it's a loophole. Okay, so like the registering your vehicle in Montana, um, South Dakota, South Dakota, See, South South, yeah. I was under the impression that Montana they, would work too. I've I've heard about Montana yeah. too. Apparently, there's a, there's a, might be a situation there too. I need to look into it. Yeah, I've got a friend. One of the, one of the other one of a past guests on here, uh, Jessica Love of Love Java. Check out Love Java. Mm. 
Um, Mm -hmm. She has uh, recently registered her vehicle in Montana. I think it's cost like 400 bucks and clear and clean and clear as long as it's a 10 year old vehicle. Um, you know, one, one, one time only, that's it. You get plates and sticker and that's it. You know, you never have to deal with it again. It's registered through a, through an LLC in Montana. So you can do it anywhere. Um, is, do you know if the South Dakota thing has like those restrictions with 10 years? No. Um, was it, it's, I think it's your best address.com, right, Shane? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, in, in South registration, Dakota, driver's license. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Registration, it's, it's, driver's you, you license. Do it, do it all. They'll also, there's also, um, They'll give you a P.O. box, which works as a physical address, um, and then they will forward your mail anywhere in the United States, wherever you are. So, like, if you're in Colorado this week or Florida the next week, they'll forward your mail to you if you let them know. Um, but, yeah, um, you go you go to South Dakota. You stay in a campground for a night. You get so, you get a receipt, and then you, go to the, then you go to the DMV, and you can register your vehicle and you can show your vehicle out of South Dakota. And then um, I think drivers, you get a driver's license there if you're in there for mm-hmm. a couple nights or whatever it is. And then um, you can also get, if, if you stay there for, and then if you have the address for like six months, you can also get a concealed carry license through them. Um, so yeah. Now, and the it, concealed carry reciprocity is worth mentioning. You've talked, you, you brought that up here. You, you brought that up, Jason, that the, that the um, a concealed carry card in South Dakota um, yeah, reciprocates with a number of states. So, like, it's, like, it's, a, like, it's a really, a really great like legal 20, exercise. 26 states or 28 states or something like that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, so, so yeah, that's, uh, like in terms of legal interstices, um, yeah. So like obviously South Dakota, like government of South Dakota, it's still a government and it should, it should be treated, you know, as vehement enemies, obviously, like obviously, you know, the enemy is government. Um, but yeah, legal interstices is like utilizing those, you know, like stuff like that where it's totally legal. Like South Dakota wants you to, wants you to, to do all of these things out of South Dakota so they can make a little money. Um, as far as, you know, like moving to South Dakota, like that, like that, that all that, all that sort of stuff. Um, you, you're not, you're not, it's, it's not uh, like a radical, like self liberational type thing. Um, but you can reduce your vulnerability to coercion, especially like South Dakota, there's no state income tax. Um, so you aren't going to have, you're going to have one less government looking to, uh, you know, uh, parasitize you. That's a word. Uh, so, so there's the big, more, uh, big, big, uh, I guess more big concepts like that. And then there's also mm-hmm. just like the, the, the normal, you know, like gun show, gun show loophole, like that sort of stuff would fit in there too. 80% um, lower. where it's, where it's, it's more, yeah, where it's, where it's kind of a gray area where like you, you can buy them online without, having without like any identification or anything but you probably shouldn't talk about it because there's like you, you might get put you're probably gonna be put on list if you buy some of those things, which is not i guess well if you're not, anonymously it, you know, it, utilize security um, and all that. if we're not on a list by now i mean yeah you know, if, you're if, doing you're not, if you're not on a list by now you're failing but uh you know, one of the things i, I, I want to bring up uh real quick when we're talking about like the south dakota thing and registering your vehicle and have a license and seal carry permit like the whole idea of vanu is limiting your exposure to to the coercion right to to the state um as an anarchist, I say, you know, oh, fuck registration, blah, 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 you know. But having this, this piece of paper, having this stick, having these stickers um, through South Dakota really is a very minimal fee. And having that sticker mm-hmm. on your car exposes you to way less coercion than yep. if you didn't have a sticker, right? If you had one of those um, sovereign citizens license plates on your vehicle, right? You pull that, you, you get pulled over, and then you got to talk to the cop. You know, every interaction with it, with a bludgy is technically a death threat so mm-hmm. having that sticker and going through something like this dramatically lowers your exposure to coercion so i mean i i think i think yeah. that is really um like the goal of illegal interstices right yeah it's it's it's, it's a mitigation step it's not a solution mm-hmm. per se yeah. like you, you don't uh, rayo talked about this back in the 1960s and 70s that you know he he gets the slave tags but like um, like when he was, when he was, when he was a van nomad, he obviously had got, he had his registration, but, um, I, I think he talked about having it. Um, but I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, I lost my train of thought, but yeah, I mean, you, you get the slave tags to, uh, you, you get the slave tags, but you don't rely upon them. Um, cause the state could re- rescind them at any time. Uh, like, especially like a passport is, uh, is, is another legal interstice. Well, having a passport from the U.S., U.S., well, I guess really anywhere in the world right now, or I guess, uh, 
since a, a lot of countries are heavy restricted travel, um, a passport anywhere would be difficult right now. But in, a, in normal normal situations, um, you know, uh, there are some some so some passports with countries that are better than others um, in terms of uh, you know limiting your coercion. Yeah, I know. Um, the... And then also having having multiple passports, which again, I hate. Like I'm with Jason. Like I, like as if a new one. Like like I don't want to deal with any government whatsoever, and especially <laughs> I don't want to get like dual citizenship and have two passports. Like that's twice the government. But um, I mean, it's it's good to have options, though. It's good to have options. I know the the federal government, like right when all of this you know pandemic kicked off, um, they restricted or they stopped issuing uh, passports, which kind of yeah. upset me because I don't have a passport. I never I never you know took those steps to get one. Um, so like all of us that don't have them are kind of shit out of luck when it comes to that. Um, do you guys know anything about this this concept of a world passport or a global passport? Um, I know Ian Freeman from Free Talk Live. He said that he got one, and it, it worked for him to go into Canada and come back. Uh, but are you guys familiar mm-hmm. with this uh, the concept of a, of a world passport? No, no, no I'm not familiar. Damn it! Because <laughs> like, if yeah, I can't so, get, a, if I can get a federal or a, or a U.S. passport, I, maybe I should just try and get one of those. If because I don't know who the issuing body would be, um, maybe the IMF, but. <laughs> Um, so with, um, with the, with the introduction, we, we've covered the, the, the concept of, you know, the legal intercises. Um, how about the, the van nomadism? Um, I, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with it. It's, it's super popular on Instagram and, and Facebook. It's, it's becoming, you know, a millennial meme these days. Um, yeah, <laughs> the, the idea of, you know, going minimalist and stuffing everything in the back of a cargo van. Um, what are some methods that, I mean, obviously you'd want to, you know, get either, you know, the registration and then licensing out of, you know, either a Montana or a South Dakota. Um, mm-hmm. but what about for people that don't want to perpetually travel? Like, is that, is that an option? Can you, can you do this van nomad life stationary? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, of course, of course. And Jason, if you want to, yeah, if you want to go ahead and yeah, go. Um, Rayo talked about this a lot in, in his original in original writings of Vanu. Um, he lived in a in a uh, a pickup truck with a camper on it, and and would uh, go into the city for work and sleep in his camper, and then go into the go back up into the woods on the weekend. Um, he tr- he traveled all over in that. Um, we have a lot of friends that do it. Uh, uh, one of them's at Shane's house right now. We saw him during the video break. Yep, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, spe- speaking with, of second round, people just show up here. Or I guess yeah. Jeremy, Jeremy and Hens just show up here randomly. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, but technologic- technologically wise, right now is infinitely times easier than it was 50 years ago when, when Rail was doing it. With with um, solar panels and, and inverters and, and all these uh, like um, uh, electric coolers and, and the, be- tech, the, the battery technology and all this stuff. Like – People are doing it all over. Like on my friends list, I could probably name six or seven people that I can confidently say that li- live in a live in a mo- live a mobile lifestyle, mm-hmm. and a lot of them um, live in the same area. Uh, a few of them do urban Vanu, and then other others like uh, Jeremy and, and and Jason that Shane mentioned, they perpetual travel. They do it for work, but. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's fairly easy. It's it's fairly easy. Uh, I think yeah. the we, we talked about it on the to be a nomad. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we talked about it on the Vanu, on Vanu, um the psychological aspect of going from four hard walls and and a stationary home and some place that you can walk around and having a full bathroom. The 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 mental aspect of going from that into a van or or um, a box truck or, or uh, a Honda Element. Jeremy lived in a Honda Element for what like fifteen months. 18 yeah. months, something like that. So, long time. It's it's entirely doable. Yeah, for about yeah, four as or five as months. as little money as you want to, you could you could you could spend you know you could spend nothing. Yeah, well, um, you'd spend well, I don't know a thousand dollars in total on the conversion, or you could be like uh, like a uh, the nomad couple we interviewed on the podcast in Australia, Carl and Jala. Um, they spent like seventy five thousand dollars on their Holy on their sprinter fuck. conversion, but that was supposed it was supposed that, to be like a studio apartment so nice. on wheels. So like they've 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 I mean it's 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 a really 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 nice van. So I mean you could spend as little or as much as you want to. You can have you can live out of uh, I mean hell, I lived out of my Mercury Grand Marquis. I mean it was tent tent camping 
Um, but whenever I did my, my little nomad journey, I lived out of my, my Mercury Grand Marquis for, for some time. Um, so like it, it can be something as small as that, or you could have a mobile home. Um, obviously one of the, I, obviously there's dif- differing levels of, uh, of conspicuousness, um, versus like a car, a car or van versus a, a mobile home. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's again, like in terms of Anu, it's highly, highly individualizable. Um, if you don't have a lot of money, you can still do it. If you have a lot of money, you can, you can obviously still do it. Um, it's a, it's a really, really good first step. And this is something that Rayo talked, Rayo talked about as well, that, um, you know, van nomadism isn't a panacea. You know, there's the slave tax. There's the, if you're on government roads a lot more, you have, you probably have more interaction with pledges. Um, there are some downsides to it, but as far as that first step of getting somebody out of the survival society, out of the first realm, um, and into, uh, you know, out, out, cause I mean, the, the nine to five jobs suck up so much time and energy for people. So if, if, so like if they can adopt a lifestyle change, like being nomadism and live on 500 to a thousand dollars a month versus having to pay that much for rent alone, um, they'll have, you know, they'll, it, they'll have more time, um, to devote to self liberation, maybe more, more time to, to educate themselves on, on whatever topic. Um, but it's, it's a very good and, you know, intermediary, or I guess intermediate strategy. Um, like I, I mean, I, my plan was to to be a van nomad and then eventually move on to move on to a sailboat. So like the van nomadism was just well, was just one step in that journey. Um so I guess that's another way you can you can you can conceptualize it too is even if it's not the end goal, um, you know, everyone I've talked to, every everyone I see that lives this lifestyle, I mean it's there's it comes with its with its own challenges and obstacles, obviously, but they still a lot of people still choose to live this lifestyle. Um so it's I've heard it's you know very, very freeing. Um, you know, the travel life is, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, really, really enjoy the travel life. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a very, very plausible, good strategy. And if, if, if you're sick of the nine to five, if you're sick of, you know, slaving away in the survival society, I mean, um, there are a lot of lifestyle changes out there, um, available and Vietnam medicine is a cheap and easy one. Um, uh, very, yeah, very, very affordable. So, yeah. For yeah, about even- four months, I did the, uh, I did the van nomad stuff for about four months when I moved to right, Detroit. Yeah. Um, working for the Detroit Threat Management Center, and you know, I I enjoyed it. I was in the back of a of a Dodge Durango. Uh, I built you know a couple of shelves and and had you know a, a bedroll laid out. It was it was pretty good. Um, the only real issues I had was trying to keep out light during the day, um, and mm-hmm. you know finding a place to park. But as long as you've got those two concepts, I mean the 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 idea of the bludgies, um, they're not. I didn't find too much issues with them. Um, with, and for those, the uninitiated, the bludges are the cops, the police, any, any state actors that are going to, you know, use violence against you and bludgeon you to death. Yeah. Bludgeon, bludges, yeah. Blu- yeah. bludges, bludgeoning. Yeah. <laughs> so like I did that and then I came back to the, to this, to Aurora to be closer to my kids and, and I, I wanted to continue that lifestyle. Um, so I, I, Henza, Jason Henza actually helped me pick up a, like a, a 79, uh, G30 Chevy G30 RV, and I completely gutted it. I'm in the process of trying to to fix it up. I I, I tore out all the floor and all the walls and everything in there, and I got ready to start putting in the flooring, and it rained, and I was, and then I realized, oh, I have three major leaks in here. Great. <laughs> so I I gotta I gotta yeah. seal up those leaks, and just trying to find time to just work on the van is really a pain in the butt. Just with you know doing as much content as as we have been doing for uh, for Anarchy Radio. Um, trying to find time and mm-hmm. and keeping it parked on the street in the t- town that I'm in, Aurora, has been probably the biggest danger because I I keep getting like these little stickers, you know, hey, you have to move it, and because uh, apparently it's only supposed to be there for three days, and where it's at right now, it's been there for about two about two and a half, almost three weeks, but luckily no one's put a sticker on it, nobody's complained about it. Um, so as soon as I have right. the ability to, I'm gonna. You know, pull that back in the driveway, try and fix those leaks. And once I do that, I've got all the insulation. I've got all the, the skeleton for the, you know, the subflooring. Um, then I can actually start, you know, kicking that into higher gear. And hopefully with this next, you know, uh, uh, supplement check or what the hell there, uh, the, this, you know, the next, the next round of Trump bucks, I can really put some, put some actual work into it. The next, the next round of communism. Yeah. <laughs> Involuntary communism. It's not they force communism. You to take, they Trump force you to take it. the money. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I'm, I'm well. Really I mean, and, and, and you make you make you make you make a good point there, um, Phoenix. And I, I want to mention that specifically because I mean, it's, Rayo, Rayo talked about this too. Um, but I, I, yeah, like I said, I lived out of my vehicle. I didn't, I didn't, you know, tent. I didn't sleep in the back seat. I was, I slept out of a tent. It would have been, it would have been ten times as, you know, less comfortable if I would have tried to sleep in the vehicle. Um, but I mean, it. 
I do think that like if if you go into this life, like if you go into it, like you just just go go and live in a vehicle, like go go and live out of a car. Um, you know, like if 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 you don't have a good setup with the with the amenities that that you that you I guess conceptually need, like if you need to have access to like solar panels and electricity, or you're going to go insane. Um, if you don't have access to that in your vehicle, like to to live in. Um, you're not going to be doing that lifestyle for very long. So, um, I mean, it, it's very much, it's very worth, um, I mean, I, th- I think, especially if you're, if you're wanting to do it for longevity and, 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 and you don't want to, I guess, sully your image of the lifestyle itself. So if you have a bad experience the first time, it's going to leave a bad taste in your mouth. You might not pursue it again. Um, but, but yeah, if you, if maybe, maybe, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I was going to, uh, yeah, like I said, lived out, of, lived out of my car. It wasn't, wasn't fantastic. There was certainly some challenges and stuff that I didn't, I didn't appreciate with the lifestyle. So, um, this time around, I'm going to get a van. I'm actually going to convert it and um, have the amenities that's you know that I conceptually need, like um, electricity. Like it just it just makes life easier. And for the content creation and such, like it's it's necessary to have have electricity. So, um, yeah, I think that's worth. When it comes to content creation, that's that's one of the big issues that I've been thinking about. Is like, how am I going to run both the computers and the mixer and the microphones off all of that? Like, I've got a good. I, I picked up four four hundred watts of solar panels. Um, I'm hoping that'll work, but like. I don't think it, it it does it matter as much when it comes to the solar system to the solar power system, um, how many batteries you have versus how many panels you have. Like if you have like three batteries that can hold, you know, you can you that can be powered off of only four panels. I mean, wouldn't that be better than you know eighteen panels and one battery? Oh, absolutely. Um, it, the 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 batteries hold the power. The solar panels charge the batteries. Mm-hmm. Right. So you have you have to have the more power than the, the the more panels like being able to charge the batteries fast is wonderful but it doesn't matter if you use all your battery power in 15 minutes and it takes six hours to charge your battery right yeah i, I would just say um like uh like as far as the the amount of power that the, uh, this technology uses nowadays like like laptops even my five-year-old laptop doesn't use any power at all when it's plugged in mm-hmm. um Very little. like yeah. a laptop a mixer like the small mixer like i have a big mixer which probably would pull a little bit um but that's like uh you know the the noddle like bitcoin uh full node and, and lightning network node that can be that that can be run in a van max hillebrand over in europe is doing that like he's running a noddle out of his out of his out of his band powered by solar panels so a lot of this stuff uses less less electricity than you think and and as jason was saying like i i imagine like it, you, you you might have to um you know vanu you know freedom does take does take some sacrifices like you might have to give up your you know really nice you know apartment in the in the city if you like it or something like that you might have to give that up and maybe go towards a little less luxurious um so that you can have increased personal freedom so there might be there might be some sacrifices you might you might have to uh, you know adjust your life maybe you can only do maybe you just have to schedule the live streams whenever you have power instead mm-hmm. uh, maybe it's dependent on power instead of dependent upon um maybe your servile society job or something if that makes sense Okay, I did and that. you can always you can always diversify with that too, and like maybe um, do the recordings in the van, and then go sit at the Starbucks or or the the Planet Fitness or Twenty Four Hour Fitness wherever you get your um, membership through, and 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 do your editing there, right? And then that that would that would save you power also while your while your batteries charge back up. Well, that's so, if we have you know Planet oh, Fitness is open. <laughs> well, uh, what was in the, November? The, right? Was it twenty four hour fitness? I think is or Planet Fitness. One of them uh, open twenty four hours, and then they have free Wi Fi, and then so it's it's like thirty dollars a month or something like that. Well, I mean, with the with the pandemic, like I got, oh, with the, with I the, wouldn't the got scam, yeah. the scam demic. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, the, yeah, normal operating procedure, you know, standard yeah. operating yeah. procedures okay. in the survival right. society. Not not in, in extreme <laughs> situations like this. We, we really we still don't really know for sure, but um, yeah, it's na- in normal operating nice. procedures when the survival society is just like reprehensible instead of like totally blatantly dangerous um yeah that's that's whenever you can you can rely on the planet fitnesses at least to a certain extent yeah and if, if you guys do go the planet fitness route i highly suggest getting the black card um it's totally worth it it's it's universal you can use it at any of the, any of the planet fitness plus it gives you access to their little massage beds which are freaking amazing so yeah there's there's a lot of perks there's a lot of perks for that for that price but yeah we're going to uh, jump over to another little uh, music break here. Um, coming up right now, we've got Rebel Inc. with No Song and then The Architects, Modern Misery. Now, if I'm not incorrect, and I, like I was last time, uh, Jason, these are your songs, correct? Yes, yes, I love those. Uh, Shane actually introduced me to The Architects. Um, very heavy, very heavy bass riffs, and I just, 
I don't know, it, it feeds your soul type of thing. And then uh, Rebel Link, like they're just they're just good anarcho music. Um, they're not around anymore, but they were they were back up on they were back in the day and they were on Adam versus the Man and and RT a few times. But they uh, they do another really good one called Police State that um, um, uh, one of the uh, Cop Block Cop Block did a video for, and it's just the vi- that that's one of those videos that just it makes you angry, it makes you want to go punch a cop in the face that I, I won't <laughs> talk about publicly, but yeah. <laughs> All right, I dig that. That's kind of that's kind of crappy that Rebel Inc. is not together anymore because I've I've had this dream um, since I started doing the the Anarchy Radio of having you know a, a concert with all the greatest liberty oriented uh, oh. musicians and Rebel Inc. would have to be on that bill. But if they're yes. not together anymore, I don't know if they're not together. I, I haven't heard anything from them in in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to look into that. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Stick around. We'll be right back after this uh, quick music break. Got some Rebel Inc. No Song and the Architects Modern Misery. And we're back, Liberty Lovers. And you heard in that break the promo that we recorded for My Shadow, which you can get uh, by pre order, sending five bucks through PayPal to uh, aka dot Dharma. Shit, I don't remember the whole thing now. <laughs> but uh, if Dharma was here, hey, there she is. Jackie K, we, uh, we, we heard your, the promo for your book, My Shadow. Um, how do people get that again through the pre-order? I have a PayPal link um, that people can actually just type in, um, but I don't remember what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap, and that was my issue, too. Is, I know it's, is, it, is it just aka.dharma at Tutanota? Totally, and... Um, it is, and I think my PayPal me is um, my shadow. I'm looking now. I'm such a stoner. <laughs> well, you know, we're always the, our, our own worst advertiser and marketers. Um, but also, you do the uh, the road to anarchy, the the page, and you added a new ability to get onto the road to anarchy. You can text road to anarchy at two two eight two eight. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make it super easy for people to join so that they have access to um, community information, um, education, really anything to do exactly what the Vanu guys are doing, um, break free from kind of the state, bring freedom home. And when was the the real, most recent episode, or issue just dropped uh, uh, yesterday, correct? Just yesterday, yeah, yeah. Um, it's in a brand new format. It's in a, a flip book format, so it's um, interactive. You can flip to and kind of play with the pages. Um, it's it's a little content light um, this time. Just um, just trying to get out the new format. Um, we'll be able to beef it up kind of in the future, but but it's a good um, thing to come. All right, hell yeah. So turning back to the second realm and abilities to free yourself from the coercion of the state, which I think uh, anybody that's listening to this, that you, that should really be your, your focus. Um, uh, not just, you know, spreading philosophy, spreading, you know, the, the theory, but also taking action and actually making it a reality in your own life to set, set the example for those that, you know, may be anarchists, but are too scared to actually do it. Maybe, you know, still full on government loving statists, and they're like, "Oh, you're crazy. You'll just die and starve and fucking you know, all this other stupid shit." Um, so we covered the the concept of legal indecisies. We've covered um, van nomadism. Um, how about this idea of sailboating, like nomadic sailboating? Uh, what's what's the deal with that? <laughs> yeah, so that is uh, another uh, yeah, another uh, lifestyle change that Rayo talked about. Uh, and uh, yeah, basically the idea is to, to live uh, to live on a sailboat and be in international waters most of the time. Uh, so uh, and, and yeah, as uh, even even governments around the world rec- will, will, will uh, recognize, uh, you know, there's no government in international waters. So uh, as far as uh, as far as truly like th- to the furthest extent possible, of, you know, being free from any control or coercion or anything like that, living on a sailboat in international waters is really uh, really where it's at, at least until you know space steading. Uh, becomes a reality, but uh, yeah, the idea is to, uh, to 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 live on a sailboat, spend most of your time in international waters. 
Um, I guess uh, another another possibility is uh, you don't have to, I guess, necessarily be too far off the coast. You could be 25, 30 miles off the coast and uh, basically just, uh, you know, float around. Uh, there's a book that we that we offer um, at uh, uh, actually it's free with uh, you get you get uh, this this book for free with uh, any order at LibertyImpact.com. But uh, the Permanent Floating Voluntary Society uh, by Carrie Thornley. So the idea is you could have, uh, you know, a community of, uh, of sailboats out there in international waters. And, uh, uh, I mean, I, I think it's a uh, really, I think it'd be an extremely freeing, a freeing lifestyle change. Um, it's, it's my dream. Um, it's my dream. Um, it's, it's, it's a little more out there though. It's a little more difficult. And, uh, um, but I mean, that's, that, that's, that I think it'd be, it'd be fun, uh, to, to live on a sailboat. Um, as far as, uh, potential, I guess, a, a downside or two to mention, um, so for live whenever, near whenever, whenever you enter a, what, what was that? <laughs> Don't live near Thailand. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that's that's probably a yeah. They're one, one of the, one of the bat, things bat people should remember if they're right. if they're going to go for the sailboating option is the fact that there is no government means there's no government. So you better mm-hmm. be able to protect yourself from all <laughs> yep. all all yeah. all aggressors, you know, public and private. Um, there was yes. there was a story of a couple that. Uh, they moved uh, he, uh, a gentleman. He you know, fell in love with this girl from Thailand, and they decided they were going to do a floating um, house. And it was, I think it was what, like thirteen miles out like of Ch- Chad Elwar- You're talking about Chad Elwartowski? Yeah, yeah. Um, they, yeah. They, they they were yeah. like what thirteen miles outside of their jurisdiction. Was was that correct? I don't know how far it was. I, I don't rec- I don't recall exactly. Um, I, I don't think I don't think they were that far off the coast, but I think they were in the um, the economic inclusion zone. So oh, okay. So like, not okay. only do they have like do governments claim a certain boundary, but then they claim a boundary past their boundary. Yes. Yes. Oh, what the. Yeah, fuck? So I think it's I, I don't recall the number like as you can find on, Wik, on on Wikipedia. There's the contiguous zone. There's the exclusive economic zone, and then there's I guess international waters. And one of them is up to like uh one one's up to like uh twenty something mi- twenty maybe twenty three twenty four miles um off the coast is where they have. Um, where they can exercise uh, some restrictions, like on like you know environmental or um, you know licensing for fishing or like stuff like that on like stuff like yeah, that. The... Um, and then I think it's up to like a I don't it's it's a lot further than that. maybe a couple hundred miles even. Um, yeah, the, or, the... I, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember the number exactly, but that's the exclusive economic zone where you can't have um, like you can't uh, um, interfere with uh, um, any coral reefs or atolls or anything yeah, like it's that. A, any, a two, anything solid. Two two hundred yeah. miles. Two hundred miles off off the coast. Yeah. Jesus. Okay, my memory's not terrible. Then. Okay, good deal. <laughs> it's been a long time since I since I talked about uh, living on a sailboat, but I think it I think it's a, it'd be a really interesting lifestyle. But one of the major downsides is, and you can find this just like there's a lot of uh, people on YouTube that do, uh, you know, van nomad vlogs. There's uh, quite a few uh, folks that do like uh, minimal sailboating vlogs, uh, vlogs. And uh, one of the downsides is for I guess if you're going to if you're going to follow all of the all of the laws and to uh, comply. Um, there's some countries when you go to port, they require you to check with like five or six government agencies Jesus um, before you can before you can like it's it's a, so yeah it's it's a it can be a pretty big pain in the ass. Um, and uh, I, I interviewed uh, Alma Sommer on uh, the Vani podcast just a, a week or so ago, and they actually had Coast Guard come come on board their boat. And uh, I guess it was a pretty bad. I mean, it's it's not a fun situation. Um, and the idea of Vani was to be to be more invulnerable to coercion, and that's like if if you're at that point, it's not it's not really a fun place to be. In. Um, and, uh, and you're going to have to return to port sometimes, right? I mean, these boats, uh, you know, some of them are big, um, but you can only store so much stuff on there. Like it's very much a frugal, minimal lifestyle, just like, uh, living aboard a van. So, um, it's, it's an interesting one, but uh, unfortunately it's just not as practical as, um, living out of a vehicle or, or something like that for, for most people. Uh, so it's one of those more, more out, out there ones. Like, I, I mean, there are a lot of out there ones I love to talk about. Like, uh, I would love to see like a really wealthy Venuan or wealthy, uh, you know, energy capitalist buy a decommissioned aircraft carrier and put it out <laughs> in international waters. Was it, wasn't that tried? If I remember right, wasn't that tried? They're not, not about, oh, the, oh, there was, the, there was also the, um, the cement barge one that they tried and it sunk. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 There was, uh, um, <clears throat> yeah. That was, uh, oh, gosh. I wrote an article on this too, and we talked about it in the Bonnie yeah. podcast. But yeah, that was that was one of the failed sea, this failed seasteading ventures. Um, yeah, one of the uh, yeah one of the, the the failed ventures. But yeah, I mean, like there you could go really far far out with this, like an aircraft carrier <laughs> and international waters. Uh, and anytime it comes under under heat, you just move. But the problem with aircraft carrier, though, 
is I actually like I I I I have a character that is an aircraft carrier in my fiction book. So I actually looked into how much it would cost, like how much fuel it uses, jet fuel. Like it's mm. like it's jet propul like it's jet fuel. It's it's expensive shit. It's not nuclear. Um, uh, there's reactors on board, yeah, but it still requires uh, it still requires things like JPL eight jet fuel. Um, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's not. You can't. Well, let me just put it this way. I don't. I don't recall the numbers off the top of my head, but let me just put it this way: you have to have a central bank and access to <laughs> access to a digital printing press <laughs> like that to be able for the to be able to pay for this fucking thing uh, to even move. So, yeah. not there's very even, practical, yeah. unfortunately. There's there's even there's even there's even ideas that were further out than that. Like there's there's one of the articles that we cover uh, talked about herding icebergs. <laughs> Yep, Herding like like, le- le- like, like legit, with tugboats like, and, and dragging icebergs, like, dragging icebergs to international waters and living on top of the icebergs and living on top of the icebergs, and like then on top of that, stuff. you would you would mine the fresh water and mine the mine the off gases, and then you could ship the fresh water to like the Middle East and then and then burn or, or sell, sell to the California, off gases. yeah, or, sell or, or sell to California. We'll take it. So. Yeah, that was that I mean, was one, that was one of the more interesting there, stories, yeah. more, more interesting articles on it. But um, it's no, it's yeah. it's one of the, and then, it's one and of then those... the, the the weird line family in Argentina. Yeah, the, or was it yeah Ch- or Chile Chile, Chile Chile yeah Chile uh, um on the the west coast of Chile there's there's a bunch of islands there. Uh, this family this family moved there, and then like they would leave and then go to the villages and find a wife, and then bring the wife back to the family and it was just it got really it's complicated and then there's there were so many rules that the, 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 like the Jim Jones type of shit. it's it was it was very odd yeah <laughs> okay. all right so i mean there's so like that's i i i love doing like there's some 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 stuff out there like that like you're you're gonna get that that sort of stuff but i mean that's the idea of vanu is Get as creative as you possibly can when you're coming mm-hmm. up with like w- coming up with solutions. Like, there's not a lot of material on this out there. Like, you're you, you can get like you can get the idea, and so, like we we can tell you you know possibilities all day long. But you've got to be super creative and coming up with you know coming up with a lifestyle that'll work for you, um, and your your specific situation. So like that's what like that's what I love about it is there's like you you get some off the wall shit like that sometimes. Um, maybe not super practical, but you like to see that people are thinking like that because you think about the average person in the survival society, they don't think at all. So, um, you know, someone's thinking like that much, that's a good thing. They're wondering where they're going to get their next, next mask from <laughs> fuck's sake. Yeah. Right. That, yeah. Like that's, that's one of the great things about Vanu is, is like anarchism. Vanu is entirely individualist, right? What, what, what your ideal anarcho situation, what my ideal anarcho situation is entirely different, right? Because, we think differently. We believe different. We have different ideas. It's the same with Vanu, right? What what someone else, how someone else wants to live, and, and their ideas of limiting their uh, exposure to coercion, and and how they picture doing that can be entirely different than yours and mine. But as long as they're happy doing it, more power to them. Now I I know you both mm-hmm. are of the ANCAP voluntarist flavor, um, but lately I've been talking to a lot of ANCOMs. Um, do you think that it would be reasonable for an anarcho communist to uh, to take some of these steps uh, in order to Absolutely. free themselves? Like, and how would they how would they um, go about that? Like, the, I, well, I don't know how familiar you are with ANCOM theory. Um, well, one of one of the tenets of Vanu. Uh, one of the, the main strategies that Vanu laid out was the idea of intentional communities. And and I I believe in capitalism, but I'm I'm closer to like a, a mutualist than I that I would call it myself an end cap. Um, but one of the ideas is is mutual or uh, intentional communities, which like um, New Hampshire, right, with with the Free State Project, encourage people to move to an area where you can be a, a, among like minded people. That's not very far from a co-op or, or from a commune, right? So having uh, intentional community, like um, uh, all the people that you meet online, like all all your your and fam, like move them to a piece of land in the middle of nowhere, like create your own community. That's and the San Infer- the San Infer- Vanu Vanu mini culture. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. it's 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 a perfect it's perfectly acceptable. Okay, cool. 
So all, all my mm-hmm. ancoms, you know, Mito Nufal from, you know, the, the Rhodes <laughs> Anarchy groups, you know, you guys can get in on this too. Um, and and I'll, I'll even, I'll even mention, I, I mentioned Carl and Jala, the uh, Van Nomads from Australia. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, that, we, we, we talked about that and their, their, their reasons for, for pursuing the lifestyle. And it was basically, you know, kind of the more leftist kind of rent is theft sort of mindset. Uh, but instead of going and begging politicians or going and trying to, you know, get a welfare check or something, they, uh, you know, became financially independent by like third age 32, like really young. And, uh, now they just travel around in a sprinter van and surf and ride, ride right. bikes and stuff like that's yeah. that is that is their life and it's and, and they 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 built that themselves they didn't go out and beg you know for the for this to happen like um so like so it's it's that that's that's the idea and so you there's there's that variety and then you know there are obviously some folks especially since there's you know wilderness fauna and off-grid homesteading um you'll definitely get folks uh like more kind of the the right wing kind of uh you know kind of uh, you know wilderness uh, wilderness venue types uh so i mean yeah there's 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 no um, <clears throat> I mean, basically, you know, as, as, as was mentioned earlier in this, in this uh, podcast, if you aren't going to use coercion, coercion against others, um, and, uh, you know, you're, you're, and you're pers- pursuing freedom and self-liberation, then great. Like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if you think rent is theft. Like maybe we could have a conversation about that sometime. And I could maybe tell you a little bit about, uh, a little bit about what I learned from human action Mises. But, um, I mean, it doesn't, that doesn't mean like, even if we disagree, it doesn't mean that we can't, it doesn't mean that I can't buy cannabis from you or something. Right. Well, it does if they don't believe in money. Like you're gonna have to have something else. You're gonna have to trade them a goat or bar. Okay, or barter, whatever. Like you, you can, <laughs> yeah. There's ways. There's always ways um, for people to work together. Um, and there's 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 always ways as long as you, as long as people are trustworthy and you know uh, security culture minded, um, privacy minded. So this next question isn't so much about um, second realms or or uh, Vanuism, um, but one of the issues that came up on the last Panarchy discussion was the concept of dispute resolution between ANCAPs and ANCOMs. Um, and the scenario that was laid out was if, uh, you know, if there's this ANCOM community over here and an ANCAP community over here and there's a forest in between, um, how do you, and, and it's not claimed by any other side explicitly, um, how would you go about um, sorting out any, any, any conflicts that arise from the use of those... Um, of those resources. Um, do you think you guys could you know, speculate on any methods of dispute resolution for those? Um, I mean, Jason, if you want to jump in, <laughs> I was hoping you would. I mean, there's, 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 there's I mean, there's a, and second round book on strategy. It's, it's, it's brought up. I mean, like that, that has been, um, with, like even intentional communities among specifically syndicalists or, or, or anarcho communists. And this isn't a slight. This is just reality. Like there, there, you know, were a lot, there were quite a few attempts in intentional communities, but unfortunately, like they didn't go into it with like a dispute resolution or arbitration, you know, ahead of time. So when problems arose, like they just kind of crumbled and fell apart. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing kind of was kind of happened with, and, and, uh, Hens and I have talked about this on, and Hens has talked about it in other places, but like the, anarcho, the anarcho capitalist community in Acapulco. Um, like there are some issues with that too that we talked about on the Vanu podcast. So like this isn't a slide against any. Uh, it's it, there's there's issues, like these are all just issues regardless of ideology you have to deal with when people work together, um, especially in physical space and time. Um, you know people's feelings are going to get hurt at, sometimes, and there's going to need to be ways to um, to resolve that. Um, <clears throat> so I mean, as far as private arbitration and private, private you know dispute resolution, um, that is something that that, that they talk about. That's uh, Smuggler and X Y Z. You know, second round book on strategy. Um, it's something that's, uh, that's, that's discussed, um, uh, in that book. And I, I would definitely implore, um, your, your audience to, to, to go and check that out. There's, uh, um, you can get it for free, libertyintertack.com right there, uh, right there at the top. You can sign up for, uh, e- email updates or you can find it somewhere else. That's just the easiest way I can tell you to get to it. Um, or actually, actually, no, libertyintertack.com forward slash second realm. Um, you can find the, the, the link to the free PDF there. Um, and, uh, and our, um, yeah, and there's, 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 there's net. Yep, that one too. Yeah, now, I've been on the anarplex.net yeah. website, and maybe I'm just too technologically ignorant, but I had a hard time finding, like, navigating my way around that site. Um, I was able to get to like to the IRC chat, but it seemed like there was nobody really on. Um, and like the access, yeah, it's, to it's the... weird when it, when there's no when there's no JavaScript, right? Like every other web sky, website <laughs> is just JavaScript written, and that's just an HTML site. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah I don't like, feel bad about it. It, it. Was it's, odd. It's, it's back like two, it's a 2007 website. So, um, yeah, 
and it's for a purpose. It's it's built with privacy in mind. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. Goddamn. Well, See, that's one of the biggest issues that I find. You know, that I think most people find when it comes to seeking privacy and security is you give up a lot of convenience. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even uh, even when you give up that convenience, and this is something that like it's conclusion I'm kind of slowly, slowly coming to over the years, but I'm losing like I'm losing a lot of hope. And <clears throat> um, like, I, I don't really think it's I think it's really difficult, if not impossible, to have privacy on the Internet, um, even with uh, a lot of these really awesome tools. Um, now, I guess the <clears throat> the. um I guess the the, the, the possibility that's, uh, that that Kyle Reardon wrote about uh, my previous host of the Volney podcast um, was uh, something called dual layer encryption, um, where you you where you combine. I think people need to start thinking this way as well. That there's a lot of high tech stuff like Signal, like for smartphones, and um, you know using PGP pretty good privacy for email. But if, we've got to remember that th- for throughout the history of humanity, people have been trying to you know like there people have been trying to keep secrets. Um, and you know, use ciphers and things. So, like, don't forget about the low tech, like all of human history, like all the options that mm-hmm. that, that exist out there. Yep. So, you can combine high and low tech technology, like dual layer encryption. Um, and so, uh, yeah, you can find that um, libertyattack.com. Just search search in the in the sidebar dual layer encryption, and uh, and you can find that. Um, but I mean, I think that's really how it, how it's going to have to be. I mean, there's tech that like I'm not a I'm not a, I, I I have a home set out here in the middle of nowhere, um, but I'm not anti technology. I just think that. Um, you know, for the, the 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 most practical and efficient uses of the of, of um most most efficient and practical uses are are using are combining both of those things. So, mm-hmm. yeah, did did on that. There's um, I uh, <laughs> as, as we know from me trying to sign on, I am technologically <laughs> illiterate. <laughs> so, um, I I do I prefer more the low key using um, um, um code words and passphrases and and doing things like uh drop boxes and and in person like if you can combine those two like if if you if you had um a passphrase that meant something to somebody and then that meant like on on this day you use you know um code you know whatever like if you if you had several codes written down and you use a passphrase and Whatever that passphrase corresponded to a, a, a different code, um, like combine mm-hmm. it. It's 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 combining old world with new world. I think I think that that will get you a lot farther than trying to rely on something you download from Google Play Store. Um, as far right. as options for uh, a, a strong security culture, um, I know there are these concepts called black phones or you know black. Black lap, uh, black boxes, you know, box meaning a computer. Um, and there's one individual that you guys work with, uh, Jamin Baconic. Um, uh, I know yeah, he's yeah. developed a ghost, ghost pad. Yeah, the ghost pad. Like, um, can you tell us a little bit about what what's up with the ghost pad and how how secure is that actually? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so basically, uh, what's what's uh, what Jamin does with these ghost pads, and he does kind of the the core things for for all, for for the core things for for all these laptops. Um, but uh, he removes the the management engine that's the, that that's in him. Um, so these are the things that you can't turn off that monitor everything that you know, like they can turn on the camera, like all that stuff. Um, like that's that's why they can do it is that management engine. So he has there's a specific models that you can actually remove that the laptop still functions and you can put in an open source part. So he does that uh, and he installs a, an operating a Linux OS on there. Um, so there's uh, um, there's obviously any option that people want he can put on there. It doesn't matter. All Linux is free and open source. Um, as far as as far as I know, uh, so yeah, any operating system as far as uh, but yeah, it's a Linux operating system. And um, as far as as far as security, um, you know they're 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 definitely a lot better. Um, definitely worlds worlds better. Um, but obviously, uh, it, it does it does require um, like you you can have a decent amount of privacy. I would say um, I wouldn't say I, I you you could have a decent amount of privacy, but you have to be very, very conscious with everything you do online, so you aren't so your, your behavior. Um, and so, like the, I've I've heard before that like obviously people have like behavior whenever they're right, like they have kind of a, a pattern for writing and a right and, and a way that they surf the internet, a unique way that they surf the internet. Um, you have to think about all of those things when you're. So you have to have kind of a second realm identity, um, like second realm identity, and then also a first realm kind of one um, for for online is like online persona. So it, it's it, it's it's complicated. Um, it's really really difficult. 
Um, but you, you can yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely much more privacy. And just because it's hard doesn't mean people shouldn't take those steps. Like, obviously, if you can get off of Linux, um, you use encryption as much as possible. Um, even like, a, a, even, even just making it like a, a lot of people just use Facebook, like, you know, like, Fas- like Facebook Messenger, uh, is obviously open to, uh, you know, open to, uh, government agencies, right? Right. Like that's, that's, that's obvious. That's a really easy, you know, honeypot for them to just take information. Well, if government agents have to actually do work for something, a lot of time that's enough for them to, to, dis- to dissuade them if everyone else is operating in the open. So utilize in- incompetence, utilize, um, you know, utilize just their bad research skills. Like I, 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 I thought about this today, but the, there was an FBI, investigat- FBI investigatory document. Um, that's a uh, Lipkin attack. When I, back when I was doing the radio show, we were mentioned in it, and that's quoted by an FBI investigator. Um, wasn't I wasn't a focus or LUA, LUA wasn't, but it was one of someone I was interviewing. Um, but Matthew Catalano, this jackass FBI agent, special agent, he um in the in in the transcript he put like Shane L N U, last name unknown, and then Stan L N U, last name unknown. Well, Stan that's a pseudonym anyway, that doesn't matter. But he couldn't. I had like a hundred articles on the site that all have my first and last name on there. <laughs> like my first and last name is splattered all across the website. It's not hidden, but this guy couldn't find it apparently. So don't like, obviously like the state is a very powerful enemy. Like don't under, like don't underestimate it, you know, like take, take precautions, but also recall that um, a lot of these people are just, you know, nameless bureaucrats um, that are incompetent and they hate their job and they hate their lives like everyone else. So, um, <laughs> like everyone else in the survival society, it seems like, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what Shane was, was kind of hitting out there and I was waiting for him to say the word, but he, he didn't really say it, but, um, Vanu and security culture and, and these ideas of limiting yourself to, to coercion in the mm-hmm. state, this is a, these are lifestyles, right? I mean, this, this isn't, this isn't something you do part time, right? If, if you truly want to limit your coercion or limit your exposure to coercion, this is, this is something you have to adjust and adopt and become, right? When, when, if you're talking about security culture, if you're talking about, uh, perpetual traveling or homesteading or, or van dwelling, living in a van or, or living in a, in a cave like Rayo ended up doing as, as a, as a, as a struggle guy, like this is something you have to adapt and become. Right. I mean, this, this isn't, this isn't something you could, all right, time out, time out. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to do this right now. Like, I just want to be normal. No, that doesn't work because that opens yourself back up. So yeah, this, th- these are yeah. lifestyle changes that, that you have to adopt. So yeah, a vulnerability in one area of your life uh, leaves you vulnerable in others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, touching uh, a little bit more uh, in detail on, um, Technology that you can use to to become to to increase your security culture. Um, the the idea of a black phone. I know it's been bandied about a bit. I know there's been a lot of people that have tried this thing here and this thing there, and it hasn't really worked out. Um, do you guys know of any options as far as the efficacy of a of a black phone or anybody that's working on one? Something that has you know a, a telephone that you can make phone calls with and connect to the internet and is untraceable and you know fifteen thousand layers well, of encryption on it. Black, Blackberry says they have one. Okay, but I don't know how much you can trust a commercial you entity. Have, you can't have privacy on a smartphone. Like you just yeah. you just can't. I, I wrote I wrote I wrote an article um, back in twenty sixteen, um, and my my conclusion then. My, I guess, slightly naive conclusion now that I'm looking back on it was that if, if you, if you buy a burner phone with cash, uh, and you only use like a open source, um, open source, like, uh, um, I guess, uh, app store, um, and you really, really practice good security culture, you probably, like, you, you, you could probably be pretty all right. And I, I think that's still plausible, but I, I don't think it's, I don't think people want to, people really expect how much, how much, how much of a pain in the ass it would be. Like, it, you might be able to do that, but you would have to replace, you'd have to get new phones like every 30 days or something. Um, like, or probably more often than that. Like, you'd have to, you'd have to swap out constantly and it would be a major, major pain in the ass. But it might be necessary for some folks. Um, so there, there's, I know there's the Dark Android project that Brian Sovereign, um, has, uh, has, uh, he wrote a book on and he also had, uh, had a, had a guide up on his website. Um, at one time, I don't know if it's still there or not. That's possible where you basically get uh, an Android phone and only use open source, the open source um, stuff, 
the privacy friendly um, sort well, of stuff. As far as the dark Android, um, my understanding was it was supposed to be it, ideally it's on a Nexus Seven tablet, so it's not even on a phone. Yes, yeah, ta- tab, yeah, tablet, yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, that's 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 possible. Um, I, I I haven't done that myself. I know you can also do things. I think it's called rooting. Uh, you can actually uh, you know root the root the the the, the, the devices. Um, so it's, there's, there's certainly, um, there's certainly some good options there. And again, like I think like if, if you're going to have a smartphone, you might as well make it as secure as you possibly can. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's an avenue that's, um, basically for me, I just use, um, I have a, I have a, uh, a Faraday bag that I, I put my phone in. Like I, I, I don't use that for kind of, I, I know they're going to track me where I am and like where I am is not really a secret. Um, at, you know, like, an, unfortunately, like it's, it's not really a secret, but I'm more worried about now. Um, is the contract contact tracing bullshit? Yeah. Um. So, uh, that's so like that's <clears throat> so I'm I I have a phone I I use my phone for mostly like OEA publication sort of stuff anyway like 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 that sort of stuff. Um. So I kind of it, it's it's good to have it's it, I can get a lot of work done it like I can I can get some work done at work whenever um I can I can double dip is the idea. So like it's worth having the phone. I just have to take I I, I so I I guess I use it for that for that convenience. Um. Uh, some people still need it, so if you're if yeah, if you still need a, a smartphone, you might as well yeah, you might as well take some precautions. Now, especially with, the contact tracing. Yeah, I, I have I have a smartphone, but there are certain things I won't talk about because I know I know it's tracked, mm-hmm. I know it's monitored. Like you'd have to be a fool to talk about those sorts of things on a monitored system. And I don't now. think it matters what app you're using. Like if you're on Telegram or Signal or Keybase. Like if, if no. they can if they can see your screen, they can screen it doesn't screen matter. Screen capture like, before it's like, encrypted. Hold on. Yeah. Like you're you're gonna trust the privacy of something you downloaded from the Google Play Store? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Come on now. Really? You're gonna trust that privacy? Now yeah. Do you yeah, know, the, only, the only the only way to prevent that is as I as I mentioned a moment ago, high high and low tech encryption. If if what's typed into that if what's visible on that screen is gibberish anyways, mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't matter if they can see it. So um, that's, I guess, again, I'll, men- I'll mention that. So hopefully someone goes and reads that article. <laughs> and where can they find that article at again? Uh, so it's, that's a, uh, you can find it at libertyunderattack.com. Um, I will, I, I don't, I don't have the, the link on, off the top of my head, but yeah, if, it's, if uh, you put in the search bar dual layer encryption, um, uh, you can, you can find it there uh, in the search bar. All right. Well, we have to jump over to another music break here. Coming up, we have Straight from the Bath by Fake Flag, or I'm sorry, we have False Flag by Straight from the Path, and uh, Gardening is Gangsta by Master Mark and Sh- Sifu Paul Davis. Uh, gentlemen, I, I think this was one of both song. of yours, correct? Yeah, one of each. One yeah, of each. one of each, yeah. So Straight from the Path with False Flag, um, well, just tell me a little bit about that one. Yeah, I mean uh, that that one. Um, it's a um, it's more of kind of punk. It's not like death metal. So like you can hear yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's screaming. It's 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 yelling, not screaming. Um, <laughs> I guess it's which uh, if you're not like you might, might not see a difference, but I do. Um, I see a drastic difference. But basically, it's uh, um, good lyrics. It's uh, very very applicable um, to uh, uh, to today. Um, they've got uh, uh, straight from the path has a couple badge and a bullet part one and badge and a bullet part two. Um, so like they're 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 anti cop leftists. Um, and unfortunately, with a lot of this, a lot of this political metal, um, a lot of them are, um, a lot of them come from like they, they'll be like good on like good anti cops, but then they'll suck Bernie, like they'll want to suck Bernie off or something. Like <sighs> um, that's unfortunately what you get with with quite a few of these 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 types of bands. But then there's King like uh, King Conquer, one of the songs from the last one. They're they're constitutionalists, so that's that's all good. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, and Molotov Solutions very similar, more conspiratorialist, uh, you know, um, constitutional sort of sort of stuff. So there's not really anarchist metal other than like, um, you know, I guess there's backwards, but uh, I guess the the don't make the let the enemy be the perfect, or I guess the perfect of the enemy the good. Right. So. so Jason, as far as Master Mark with gardening is gangsta, how as, how gangsta as, can gardening be? Like uh, I I grew I'm in California. Like I grew up in California during the 80s and the 90s. I grew up on gangster rap and thrash metal and ska and sublime and skateboard and all this other stuff so like it's 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 a gangster-ish rap song about gardening <laughs> like they, they 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 have a meetup to buy compost in in the video i mean come on now you can't you can't get better than that all right ladies and gentlemen so here we go with some uh 
the next next couple of the last two songs from our guests and uh once we come back uh i want to talk about um you know what's the future for the vanu podcast what are you guys working on as well as uh any any new plans for road to freedom or i'm sorry road to anarchy road to freedom uh same thing i mean isn't it um so we'll be right back ladies and gentlemen stay tuned here you go with false flag by straight from the path and gardening is gangsta by master mark all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to anarchy radio i'm your host ken the liberty dj phoenix with me as always is jackie k the amazing co-host out of colorado and joining us are shane radliff and jason booth of the vanu podcast and liberty under attack publications um one of the one more thing before we get to you know the future of the the Vanu podcast and LUA and the Road to Anarchy um, is another option that people have for um, freeing themselves from you know the coercion and the, and the monopolization that people that you know, authoritarians tend to tend to like to do and that is synthesizing your own medicines. Um, I know Shane uh, being a diabetic. Um, that's a, a major issue for you, and um, you've you've taken the route of um, a lifestyle change where you know you've gone you know, mostly carnivore mm-hmm. diet, um, and that seems to help. Mm-hmm. But um, are you guys familiar with the uh, the Four Thieves Vinegar Collective? Mm-hmm. Yes, I, uh, I interviewed. Uh, what's the, uh, what was what's his name? Um, I should remember his name. Um, yeah, I interviewed him. Um, yeah. So they have this this idea where you know you build this chemistry set essentially and you can mm-hmm. synthesize all these pretty much any type of drug that you want um do you guys uh have you guys tried any of that do you have any um any idea about like pricing or um pitfalls um any, any experience with that um, so I, I'm familiar with, uh, yeah, the four manager collective and I'm, I'm trying to pull up his name here. Um, cause I don't recall off the top of my head. I interviewed him as part of our crypto anarchism series. Um, Dr. Michael Laufer. Um, yeah, so I, I, I guess, um, uh, there's, I think there's a few, a few, um, drugs that can be, that can be made on it now. Um, but you know, it's, it's still very, very early on, um, in the, in the early stages. Um, now, as far as um, insulin per- in particular, there's a project out in Oakland called uh, uh-huh. the uh, Open Insulin Project. And yep. uh, right now, um, they are, I guess this was uh, the last I checked was a few months ago, um, they had, uh, they were working on making the precursor to, uh, to insulin. So, um, I mean, they're making, they're making some progress, which, uh, which is, which is good. Um, and so like there's, there's, there's kind of, uh, there, there's kind of an open sourcing and a decentraliz- decentralization theme in medicine, even among folks who aren't anarchists. Um, like for uh, for diabetes in particular, there's uh, something called uh, well, they be 83, and there's um, the uh, there's a uh, there's a bunch of uh, you know type one diabetic um, groups like that where the the medical system has has obviously like the, I I believe I I, whole, I wholeheartedly believe that big pharma gave me uh, type one diabetes to begin with, um, but um, there's folks that um, yeah the, these folks who theorist. yeah they aren't they aren't anarchists. But they, they they've been filled by the medical system, and it's either they take it, they, they 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 take control of their type one diabetes, or they're going to be you know going blind by age forty, or you know having a heart attack, or sh- like just really bad shit. Um, so like this is it's it's been really incredible. It's like a hidden part of the internet. Like obviously they don't talk about this stuff, especially not on government controlled media where it's mostly funded by pharma. So. I mean, there's there's a lot of really really cool stuff happening in this avenue, and you know, just like with, we're talking, we've been talking about the second realm. Um, I mean, we're building base, we're basically building alternative infrastructure to uh, the first realm. So, medicine and health and nutrition that comes into play too, right? Um, so, like even beyond uh, all the other things we talked about uh, talked about today. So, yeah, that that definitely plays a role. And uh, there's there's a lot of really really great projects out there. And uh, you know, with all this access to information, like I, 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 we were, I joked beforehand before we started that, yeah, I am a, I am a fucking nerd, and I, I take that like I take that on the chin. I'm, I'm very proud to be a nerd. But, like I, I print out like research papers on type one diabetes and like try to read about the mechanism mechanisms of action, like of how it happens, and you know what, you know the pancreas and all the isla, you know all the pancreatic beta cells, and I try to learn about how this stuff works and you know what fucked up and how it can be fixed. So hopefully, because I, I mean, obviously they're not going. The solution's not going to come from the people that make them make the money. Um, off of a cure not being available, right? So if that solution is going to going to come, it's going to come from individuals. So, um, I mean, it's there is definitely a, a trend in that direction as well. Um, with with uh, 
with Health and Fourth Use Vinegar Collective and Dr. Michael Lafria. They're doing they're doing really, really great work. And I think even just kind of like with the Liberator pistol, we're just the idea that people mm -hmm. realize, holy shit, I can 3D print a gun. Like this <laughs> the same kind of thing with with doc, with Dr. Michael Lafria with like the EpiPen that holy shit, like so we can actually make our own medicine. Like we can do this. Oh wow, I didn't think like I, I was only thinking in this in, in this paradigm and holy shit, we don't need them. Okay, fair enough. So um, like there's, there's, there's definitely a lot of that happening. Now, yeah, um, oh, go ahead. the, the open insulin project there in, in Oakland, they're at a place called counterculture labs. Um, their website says it's a community, community supported micro microbiology makerspace, right? That's a, that's a second realm industry, right? Mm, that, that, yep, that, that's, definitely. that's a second realm area. Um, because they operate outside of government, they're community supported, supported. So there's no government money going to this, going to the space, going to these groups. So these are second realms, right? I mean, these these are. Yeah, and, and even and even even if even if say like they they've got a headquarters, they've got a website with an address. Even if they were to be taken down by like uh, mm -hmm. even if uh, you know like as as uh, the American Medical Association they, say, Association did with a lot of chiropractors back in the mid 20th century, um, if they send uh, you know the federal goons after these people. Um, the, the, you know, the, the federal goons after these people for making unlicensed insulin. Um, mm -hmm. well, the knowledge is going to be out there. It doesn't matter if they go and shut down, you know, this, you know, this group of people because, um, you know, it's, it's open source and it's, you know, community funded. So like they'll, they'll just pop, pop up somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're, if you're interested in developing your own medicine, uh, for these vinegar collective, I know they've, they've got the, they can, you know, order a kit. I think it's a couple hundred bucks. Um, and you can start, you know, making your own aspirin, your own, uh, you know, freaking antibiotics. Um, this, uh, you, you mentioned, uh, the idea of like the precursor to insulin. Um, I have no clue, like, mm -hmm. what the hell that even means. Uh, what, what, what does that mean? Like, what is a precursor for something like? <clears throat> so I, and, and a lot of the, this is really, co this is complicated shit. And like with, with pharma, they, they use big words and make things complicated so that so that it seems like it's more complicated than what it really is. Um, but again, like I, I there's I, there, I still have a lot of study to do on this. Uh, but basically, so they, they used to get like they used to extract insulin from pigs. So it used to come from I think pigs and maybe one other type of animal. So they used to just extract it from from other animals. Well, um, most a lot of the insulin now is actually synthetic. Um, so there's I don't know what the chemical is, but apparently there's a um, like a um, yeah, there's a chemical precursor that if you, if you can make that precursor, you can make insulin. Um, so it's, it's just, a, I guess a, it's just a chemical process that I don't understand. I haven't done it myself. I haven't, yeah, I haven't done any of this, any of this myself. It's a little, it's definitely a little out of my pay grade. So like the, uh, well, the insulin grade, precursor, but just little, it's a little out there for me now. So the insulin precursor is like the insulin precursor is to insulin as plastic is to a liberator pistol. Like it's it's kind of like the sure yeah that's, that's yeah, exactly before, yeah, yeah that that'd be a way it. to think about it yeah okay yeah all mm -hmm. right well yeah we're we're coming up to the last couple of minutes um what what what, do you, what does the Vanu podcast have uh, in store for the future um who you guys got lined up like what 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 series so, are you guys um, up? yeah so so right now I'm in the process of re-releasing and this is just I mean this is apropos timing that you know like this 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 discussion because I was I just started releasing. Uh, the building a second realm series, re-editing it or editing it down a little bit, and re-releasing it on the Vani podcast uh, feed. So all of those episodes will go out over the next couple over the next couple of months. There's like 15 episodes, like 50. It's I guess it's like 15 plus hours. So um, a lot of content there that'll be released on on the podcast feed. That's that's probably the biggest thing. Um, then I mean I've been doing a lot of I've been doing you know, I do probably a couple live streams a week on Fascist Tube. Um, so those go out on the podcast feed uh, you know a week or two after. So I've I've, I've still got a, some of those to get out. Uh, as far as discussions in the future. Um, I, I actually don't have, uh, don't, don't have anything planned. It's, 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 it's interesting. It's like, we, we used to do these like massive, or I, I guess for the past two years, we'd been doing the crippling anarchism series. Could never finish it. Just could never finish it. <laughs> um, but now like I could talk about whatever, like next week when I wanted to. So like, it's kind of like whatever I'm really into, like that week is and, like, if I, if I come across something and want to interview David Crow, like from the infectious Smith podcast, like, and we I can work that in some way to Vani. Like I can always like yeah. work in my personal my personal interests and hobbies into i can make him relevant to Vanu. so that's yeah, that's the, what i do a lot of the the the, the thing is with Vanu, like it was it it was gone until it was discovered and then like that's it right there's there's only there's only so much information because rayo mm -hmm. disappeared like we we have right. like he just walked off the face of the earth in like what 72 
So there's there's only yeah, like 19, 1974, yeah, or 74. So, so there's only like six or eight years worth of writings from Rayo. Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's only there's yeah. only so much we can do about that, but we can we can find other stuff and tie it in because, you know, it's it's all it's all relatable. You know, and anything anything that can help you limit your exposure to the coercion of the state or or to, to other outside forces is part of the Vonish strategy. It's it's a giant umbrella. Now, as far as Liberty Under Attack publications, um, anything new coming out as far as that? Any any new projects, books you guys are working on publishing? Any new audio books that you guys have in the works? Like maybe one for My Shadow? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so there's there's obviously a lot of stuff. Um, there's always like 25 projects going on with the publications. Um, I, I've got like I've got so many things like I want to do. There's just, there's not enough time, and then all this shit happens. So I had to like. I had to really, really focus in on, you know, getting farm animals so I could um, continue to eat the two or three pounds of meat a day that I do. Um, but uh, uh, so, yeah, Elliot LA Publications, there's a, a lot of stuff in the works. We're releasing. Um, I can't I'm not going to say too much on it right now, but there's a, a book that's we're pretty close to publication on it. Um, it has to do with uh, it's the, it'll be the first book we've released on firearms. Um, so that's that's all, all I'll say right now. Um, it's what we have on and firearms is kind of the subject matter. So that one uh, should come out here in the next uh, in the next uh, hopefully month or two. And um, I, I need to. Uh, I, I, I uploaded a second round book on strategy, um, that audiobook, as well as uh, the Brushfire audiobook, uh, the uh, the fiction, uh, the fiction book by uh, by Matthew Atechi uh, that we published. Uh, his audiobook will be uh, his, his audiobooks on the website, and it should be on Amazon along with a second round book on strategy at some point. But they've been Amazon's been slow as slow as shit about all this. Um, yeah, apparently, yeah, they they had to, their employees have to work from home, but I don't know why. I don't know. Using a laptop at home makes this process months longer. But anyway, regardless, so I've, I've got to get uh, the second round book on strategy audio book up on the LUA website, which I'll do this weekend. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, we're just we're still just trying to publish, you know, a book or two. Our goal is to publish a book or two a month. We've been kind of failing on that, um, but yeah, there's uh, yeah, lots of lots of books coming out, and, and obviously we we do help authors uh, through the publishing process uh, uh, as well. So libertyandertech dot com forward slash um, or actually, yeah, just uh, publish libertyandertech.com forward slash publish. Uh, you can go there and, and learn all about our, our services if you want to. Uh, if you uh, need our help uh, publishing a book, so um, I, I guess that's 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 really it. Um, the Bonnie Firearms is, is really the, the next big the next big release. Uh, so hopefully that'll be that'll be out in the next month or two. And as far as the the Brush Fire audiobook, definitely get it. I I, I listened to it. I, I thought it was a very entertaining um, listen, and the book itself, I, I enjoyed the story. I if if you know anything about the story, um, you'll know what I mean when I say I have a fucking Barnaby that works with me, <laughs> and uh, yeah. I fucking hate it. Yeah, uh, the the guy oh, he loves the state. He loves him, and it's so terrible. And like we had, we, they had instituted this. And, this and, Ma- mass and Matthew policy. Matthew writes it. He, Matthew writes it in a way like where you where you can't help but like your blood boils from reading like listening to this fucking guy. Yeah. Like it, it's 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 yeah, it's frustrating. <laughs> Intentionally frustrating. They they instituted a, a mask policy at work, and uh, it, it lasted for all of fucking half a day. But the first day that they instituted it, I walked in and this guy's like, "Where's your mask, dude? You, you need to have your mask on. What are you doing?" And I'm just like, "Dude, we've been working." For the last two months with no masks, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I'm like, I don't know. What the fuck do you mean? Like, ha- half the people when I first walked in weren't even wearing them. And then, like, the, the I was like, I'm not going to put it on until the, until I see the owner put it, wearing one. And then, like, two hours into the shift, he had his on. So I was like, oh, fuck. All right, whatever. And I wrapped a little bandana around my neck and just kind of, like, ha- had it, like, covering half of my mouth. And I'm doing as little as I can to, to comply with that stupid-ass shit. And by the by the second day, nobody had them on. And uh, by, like this thursday and friday there was no one wearing masks whatsoever it was it was it was so wonderful even despite barnaby and then the people that the people that rolled over initially looked like fools yeah like yeah. there there was like the hyper compliant folks the, the, their, their, their argument was like you, you look like a jackass the, 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 the owner's argument was you know oh i don't want this i don't want the, this place to go down like like the meat packing plants did and i'm like most of us work over 12 feet away from the other person anyways like what the fuck are you talking about but <laughs> definitely, definitely get your hands on uh, Rush Fire. Uh, thank you so much, guys.